well, Charleston is home. But I was with my, my aunt, um, also my godmother in Charleston. And, um, you know, I just remember we were watching TV together and she got a phone call and we changed the channel where they're doing a, a live, um, live, uh, I guess. Um, Cutting. Yeah, from, from downtown. Mm -hmm. And the story was unfolding uh, oh, before our eyes. And um, I remember reaching out to my friend whose father and mother were at the church an hour before the shooting happened. And he was saying that, you know, despite what you hear on TV, it's far worse. Because at the time, no one was reported dead. And we didn't know what was actually going on. And, um, you know, I get kind of emotional thinking about it because um, so much of my life has been um, lived with commitment to service. I went to divinity school and, you know, I've taught Bible study and Sunday school more times than, 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 I, than I can name. So the fact that he was uh, murdered, um, serving, particularly serving in a context that was really familiar to me, in a place where I, I've always felt safe, really uh, was, was really tough. And um, the fact that this was yet another example of racial terror for, for us to really be reminded of in our country was also profound in the Southern context. Um, so I think that, you know, I've always, um, I don't know, it's, 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 it's a tough thing to really, to really grapple with that really um, has impacted me today. But at the time, I shifted my research to really explore contemporary Gullah Geechee identity in, in the wake of the shooting, because it was a way for me to not only process my own grief, but to also make sense of something that to this day remains uh, really hard to, to, to grapple with.